uh, that sustain star formation? Yes. So thank you. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, a description of our attempts to find uh, the gas that is being accreted and is supposed to be uh, sustaining star formation in uh, these galaxies of the local universe. Uh, we have been working on this thing for a number of years now, and so what I'm going to present today is something that has been carried out in collaboration with a significant number of people. The main players of the game are listed here. Um, as uh, most of uh, us know, cosmological numerical simulations uh, uh, clearly point out that gas accretion from the cosmic web is feeding the star formation uh, in, in, in these galaxies. So uh, this is a robust prediction that is expected to happen at all ranges, also in the local universe. And it's particularly efficient if the uh, galaxies that are accreting gas are uh, low mass galaxies when uh, the halo mass is lower than 10 to the 12 solar masses or so, because then the uh, mode of accretion go through this channel called uh, call for accretion that is particularly effective. Now, it's very clear that that's the way in which galaxy disks grow from theory. So what happened with the observation? Do we have observational evidence that this gas accretion is going on in real galaxies? Now, my answer to the question is that uh, we have many hints that something like that explains many of the observables of the galaxies, but we don't have a final proof yet. I mean, we still have not found the, the smoking gun. Uh, among the hints that are more suggested in, in this direction is the existence and the properties of the uh, so-called extremely metal poor galaxies of the uh, local universe that we have been studying. Uh, I mean, these galaxies, by definition, uh, extremely metal poor or XMPs, uh, are those where the gas that is now producing star has a metallicity uh, smaller than uh, one tenth of the solar metallicity. You select by metallicity, but they turn out to be a particular morphology. These galaxies turn out to be cometary. These are uh, images from, from Sloan. This is how they look like. It's one of the prototypes uh, in, 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 uh, uh, seen with the uh, HST. Now, uh, this particular case, you see this huge starburst in a side. Uh, of a cometary shaped uh, galaxy. Now, uh, these galaxies are uh, first uh, rare in surveys, less than 0.1%, for instance, in, in Sloan. Uh, they turn out to be cometary, as I pointed out. They, uh, they are extremely gas rich. Typically, the gas mass over the stellar mass is 10 or so. They rotate, although the uh, Turbulent velocities, although I shouldn't say turbulent now, I should say the uh, unorganized motions are comparable to the rotational velocities. Uh, they tend out to be uh, isolated in the sense that they uh, live in uh, low density environments. And uh, among other properties, the metallicity seems to have a lower uh, limit threshold. So all the uh, star forming galaxies, even if they are metal poor, they are never as metal poor as 1% uh, solar or so. Among the new properties that we have been uh, found recently is the fact that they are uh, this like obvious, but they are triaxial, so they are not really uh, complete disks. And we find that thing from studying the distribution of axial ratios that are observed in a collection of these galaxies. And another recent property is that the uh, main starburst, the starburst that is in the head of the, of the comet, so to say, has a mass loading factor larger than 10. And this you infer from the existence of little emission wiggles in, in H alpha. Now, the property of these galaxies that really uh, tells us that maybe they are going through one of these uh, cosmological gas accretion events is the following one. The fact that they are not uh, chemically hom uh, homogeneous. They, are, they have chemical inhomogeneity associated with the stars in the sense that the place that is going uh, the head, so the part that is uh, having the starburst is of low metallicity compared with the rest, rest of the galaxy. This is a, a, a cut across the major axis of this particular object. And in blue is the star formation rate. In red is the metallicity. And you clearly see a drop of metallicity coinciding with the peak of star formation. And this is the general behavior. Um, these are these that are rotating. So the time scale for gas mixing in a disk is expected to be pretty short of the order of the rotational period or so, so 100 million years or so. So if we see metallicity in homogeneities in these galaxies, it is 
pointing out that the gas that we see forming stars has just arrived from outside, just meaning the last uh, 100 years or so. So if you put together all these uh, pieces of information, so it's a metal pool uh, starburst, uh, it's a metal pool starburst of flow metallicity of a gas that has just arrived from outside. All this is very in, uh, indicative of the galaxy going through one of these cosmological gas accretion uh, events. So if you want to look for the gas that is kind of falling in from the intergalactic medium into the galaxy, these are ideal uh, targets to look for such gas. And this is what we have been trying to do uh, during the last year or so. Uh, what I'm going to show now is just work in progress. I'm just going to point out the two lines of, of research that we are uh, following. The first one is try to detect this gas in emission, uh, in H alpha. I mean, uh, again, this uh, uh, gas around galaxies has been detected in, in emission in, in Lyman alpha by people working here in Santa Cruz. And uh, uh, the same processes that produce this Lyman alpha emission, at least some of them are expected to produce H alpha photons as well. And so making some sort of educated guess, you expect a signal in the range of 10 to the minus uh, 19, 10 to the minus 17 arcs per second per centimeter square per arc second square. So reaching that sensitivity is something doable with the present uh, instrumentation. And we uh, did a kind of proof of concept observation with the big telescope uh, in the Canary Islands, the, the GTC, uh, to try to measure uh, faint halos of H alpha around one of our targets. Uh, this is the field, uh, and this blue thing here is our target. So we are interested in knowing what happened with the mission around the, the uh, galaxy. And this is what we get uh, shown as a color map. Uh, blue means emission in H alpha. The first, I have a couple of things that are important here. The first one is that this is very noisy, but the noise is at the uh, level of this 10 to the minus 18, so where we expect the signals to be. The galaxy is this thing here, and you can notice a halo of bluish things around the galaxy, which we think is real. So this is uh, H alpha emission, and you see plenty of blobs, which again is, is, uh, is real. So this is uh, emission in, in, uh, in H alpha. Uh, we still don't know whether it's emission in H alpha or some of these are uh, contaminant uh, sources from background, uh, from sources that are in the, in the background. We are working on trying to figure out exactly what, what happened here. Uh, the second way in which we are trying to detect this gas is in absorption upon uh, background sources. And so what we did with a large collection of these XMPs, like a hundred or so, look, by the way, uh, this is the near uh, universe, so we don't have access to the uh, UV, and we have to find uh, these absorptions in the visible. And so we uh, try to find absorption of the gas around the galaxies in uh, the resonance lines of uh, calcium-2 and uh, sodium-1. And so we did for a large collection, and for a couple of cases, uh, we, I, okay, what, well, Okay, what we did was stacking all the background sources, uh, shifting in wavelengths so that the absorption at the ratio of the galaxy uh, agree. And for a couple of sources, we think we have detected uh, absorption in, in calcium-2. Uh, this is one of the, the examples. And again, this is preliminary, so uh, I still don't know exactly, uh, I mean, to what extent this is something that you can trust. So uh, this is all what I had to say during these uh, minutes. And so let me uh, finish with the take home uh, message. First, as I said, from the point of view of the numerical simulations, it's very clear that the gas accretion, the cosmological gas accretion is feeding the star formation in, in galaxies. Uh, I have pointed out that these extremely metal poor galaxies of the local universe have a set of properties that make the, them ideal targets uh, because they seems to be going through one of such gas accretion episodes. Uh, and so they are ideal to try to find the gas that is falling in to the galaxy that feeds in the star formation process. And we are exploring various possibilities to try to find uh, this gas around them. Thank you.
So how many targets are you going to have? This H alpha search, for example, how many galaxies do you plan on looking at uh, moving forward? Uh, we still don't know. Uh, it depends strongly on, on the, uh, I mean, known, there are several hundred sources. Uh, ideally, we would like to make 20 or 30 of those things, but it all depends on the allocation committee. And probably, and probably uh, it's even more sensible not to try to do it uh, in imaging, doing uh, deep imaging, but try to use IFUs to kind of reduce the, the uh, noise from the sky. So uh, how many sources are we planning on doing? Once we really pick up the technique, the proper technique to do it, uh, we will decide, but like 20 sources or so would be a kind of idea. In the case where you have these comet systems, what do you think it's uh, about these two? Uh, have you gotten any H1 observations to demonstrate that there's a chunk of gas that, that we've got to do this hitting? Yeah, that for many of these systems, there are uh, H1 observations, but these are uh, disks, so they have a huge uh, H1 disk uh, that is often rotating. In some cases, it's clear that there is a stream of gas <coughs> that seems to point towards the, the center. So they have a huge uh, H1 disk in general, sometimes very distorted. Yeah, but the scales are very, very different. So, but yes, of course, uh, studying these objects in H1 is an obvious, uh, one of the obvious ways to go.